Okay, I said, well, morning, everybody. Uh, certainly excited to be here. And uh, as the game gets closer, um, you know, just really kind of anxious to, to, to get going. We've been practicing all for probably two weeks uh, on Auburn. Uh, I think the, the extra time benefited uh, in a lot of ways, not only the health of our team, but uh, the preparation for Auburn. They're, you know, they're an excellent, obviously, running, running the football, but just the, the different elements of, of the run game, uh, the, the formations, uh, they give you a lot to um, dissect uh, and get to your players. So, um, you know, the preparation's been good. We're healthy, um, and it'll be a, you know, a very physical test uh, for us. Um, you know, just the styles of play that that we play in our league, opposed to what we're going to see uh, here in a couple of days, will be a little different. But uh, again, they, there's, there's still a lot of similarities to, to the plays that that people run in our league. It's again, it's just a, a different. Um, you know, we're dealing with a um, you know very talented um, you know physical football team that has skill. Uh, you know, at, at every position. And I, th I think they'll be much healthier uh, in this game than they were in the last month of their season. So it, it should be, uh, you know, a very exciting game. And I think our, our players are, are anxious to, to, to get going. Yeah, Go ahead James. Open the floor for questions for Coach Stoops. James Hale, Sports Talk 1400, the ref. Mike, you brought it up and you talked about it just kind of at the end of your statement that, you know, Petway's now healthy. They've got their running backs, their quarterbacks healthy. Uh, how's that changed the dynamic of their game than maybe what you saw in the final two or three games of the season? Well, I, I think for a team like this, uh, you know, Petway is, you know, obviously a big part of what they do. But, you know, their quarterback, finding balance, uh, any team that runs the ball that effectively, their ability to throw the ball, uh, play action passes, uh, those types of things will be critical and not giving up chunk yards. So I, I think the quarterbacks is, a, you know, the quarterback play is, is, is really important to trying to keep balance, you know, with their, with their offense and, and keep you off guard so you can't just load up and try to stop the run because they, you know, they have very skilled uh, receivers and, and, and can get the ball, you know, deep. And so you just got to, you know, try to, try to manage it with your, you know, the way we like to play. Uh, and, uh, not overcommit uh, to the run. I mean, we, we have to be able to play physical at the line of scrimmage. We have to be able to get off blocks. We have to be able to leverage the football. They like to get the ball to the perimeter more than any other team, you know, we've seen. Uh, so, you know, there's just, a, you know, there's a lot there. Hey there, Brent Martell with the Associated Press. Uh, as a uh, follow-up to that question, when you know you have a whole season worth of uh, Auburn offense film to study, but given their health now, are there certain games from the season that you're looking at and saying, "Well, that's really the Auburn team we're going to face in this game"? Well, obviously, you know you look at the past couple years. Um, you know whether it was Kentucky from last year, whether it's Georgia, whether you know, you, you look and see what the similarities are, how they block. You know our front's a little different than other fronts, so schematically, you know, how they want to block an odd front opposed to an even front. You, you have to look at all those things and dissect the last, you know, two and three years. So you have to go back and, and really look at it. And that's, that, that's what kind of gets hard for, even though you have that much time, you start looking at everything. And if you start looking at every formation over the last couple of years, there is just so much there. So, you know, but, you know, our principles, you know, have to, you know, stay in place. Um, in, within our system and, and play within our system. So, you know, we have a pretty good idea how they're, you know, they're going to attempt to attack you, but, you know, they've always come up with new wrinkles, and that's just part of being in a game and, and being able to adjust to, to whatever new wrinkles they, they put in. Mike Carey Murdoch from Rivals.com. Um, is Kansas State maybe the, the team that helps prepare you the most that you've faced that is similar to Auburn? and? And also, what's it meant to kind of have a guy like Kyler Murray to, to kind of simulate that in practice for you? 
Well, he's, Kyler's done a great job for us. We've been, we've probably had the best scout team quarterbacks over the last three years of anybody in the history of college football. So, uh, Kyler's done a great job. Um, Kansas State, a little bit, not, not, not a lot. Uh, there's, you know, their system is, you know, they, they, they you know, their, you know, their zone schemes are similar to everybody we see. Their power, their gap schemes. Everyone has zone schemes, gap schemes, fly schemes. So, it's just, you know, they're, you know, they're very balanced in, in how they want to attack you. Um, you know, what's different, you know, about them, like I said earlier, they get the ball to the perimeter probably as good as anybody and, and let their skill guys, um, you know, run the ball too. So, you know, as much as they run it downhill at you, they're going to get the ball out on the perimeter as well with their skill guys. Down in the front. James Carpey from mail.com. Mike, the, uh, Auburn just got a commitment from Jared Stidham and just wanted to get your thoughts on what he brings to the table and uh, how challenging a matchup he was for you last season. I, I really like him. I, I think he'll fit in nicely with uh, Coach Melzahn's, you know, system. Uh, he's a, you know, he's a dual threat, but, you know, he's more of a prototypical thrower of the football. I think he's, you know, a very mature kid. Uh, I was impressed with him. You know, playing as a as a freshman a year ago, and you know, I think he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of arm talent. Um, so, you know, I'm sure they'll blend. Coach will blend the offense. You know, you always mold it to what your players do and what they can't do. So, uh, I think he'll give them, you know, a different, a little different dimension, uh, throwing the football, um, spreading the ball out. But you know, Sean does that as well, and some of their other guys. So. They won't, you know, again, they'll just play to his strengths, and I, I think he'll give them a lot of flexibility uh, to do, you know, a lot of things. Uh, he's a, just a very talented player. Second row right here. Myron Patton, Fox 25, Oklahoma City. Uh, first off, how's the, the downtime from a health standpoint? How are you health-wise? And two, how do you feel like the, the last few ball games of the season, how you've played, how that will help you go into this game? Well, health-wise, uh, you know, we're as, we're as healthy, uh, you know, as we've been. Obviously, this year, you know, we've taken a lot of hits on the defensive side of the ball for various reasons. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, you know, the guys that, you know, brought us here are here, and uh, we'll get the majority of the snaps uh, uh, in two nights or two days or whatever it is. Uh, so, you know, that part, you know, we're in pretty good shape. Uh, you know, this year has been just a, it's been a tough year finding the consistency uh, in stretches. I, I think we've played well uh, to put ourselves in position to win. But, you know, overall, we need, we need to play a more consistent game. And hopefully that will happen, you know, here, save our best for the last. Um, but, you know, we've, you know, we've really fought through a, a difficult year. And, uh, really proud of just the way the kids have handled it and stuck hung in there and uh, this will be a, another big challenge. I, I think our league from an offensive perspective is different than most. Uh, I think most people that you know watch football can agree to that. We saw that the other night in what Oklahoma State was able to do to Colorado. So you know we, we, we just got to you know we got to find more consistency in what we do. Uh, regardless of what the situation is. And uh, that'll be key here, uh, uh, you know, playing Auburn uh, because they're a very talented defense as well. So that, that you know, we're going to have to do our part in this game. Uh, this, this, this defense that Auburn will put on the field will challenge our offense, you know, more than anybody else has probably this year. So. You know, that being said, you, you don't know how the games are going to turn out, but we, we, we have to make sure we don't, you know, um, give up a bunch of big plays and a bunch of points. Uh, so that's going to be critical for us. Dean Blevins, News Night Sports. Uh, Mike, how do you match up physically with these guys? And you mentioned the OSU game. Is that something that you guys look at and kind of gives you confidence? Again, we, we know we go up against week in and week out. Nobody goes up against th those types of offense. So, um, you know, we understand it. It's just the, the, the style. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of a, 
uh, style clash here. Um, but, you know, we faced that playing Alabama three years ago. I mean, you, you play a team from the, the Southeastern Conference, you're going to get a physical football team and a, and a talented football team. Uh, I think our players understand that, respect that, and know that, you know, we, we, we're going to have to play great technique at the line of scrimmage. We're going to have to get off blocks, and, you know, that's, that's, that's football. And hopefully they're, they're looking forward to that challenge uh, because it's going to come. Right back here, please. Garrett and Amy of the Tulsa World. Uh, Mike, since uh, the Mixon video went public, uh, Bob's caught a lot of flack and has sort of had to relive, you know, that decision and, and that moment all over again. And I know uh, it, it's, it's been, it seemed, it, perception is it's been taxing for, for him personally. I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on how that's affected him and, and, uh, and, and how he's come through that. Well, it, it's taxing for everybody uh, associated with you know, our program, our university. So, but, you know, Bob's, you know, persevered a lot of, through a lot of things. Uh, you don't last 18 years at Oklahoma uh, without, you know, enduring, you know, tough times. And, you know, he's, Bob, if you guys know, he's very resilient. And, um, you know, he, he tries to do he, the best he can for, you know, the University of Oklahoma. It's very important to him. He has a lot of pride in the way he runs his program. So I'm sure it hurts, uh, but you know that's that's part of the job, and um, you know we're all getting through it and moving forward. We have time for one more question for Coach. Any further questions? Mike, you kind of mentioned it earlier, but with every all the talk around the Big 12, the perception of the Big 12, what does it mean to to be able to have this game, be in the Sugar Bowl, play a, one of the top teams from the SEC, and potentially win it for? Basically, the status of OU, the status of, of your league. Well, I, you know, we want to represent, you know, first and foremost, you know, Oklahoma and Oklahoma football. We can't dictate, you know, how everybody else plays in the league. Uh, you know, we want to be different. We want to be able to uh, be able to play a lot of different styles, and uh, that's what good football teams do. They match up with everybody, and. Um, you know, this is a different matchup, but you got to adjust, and, and that's what why you want to have, uh, you know, a diverse defense that can do a lot of different things. So, you know, again, uh, there's there's always uh, y the media's perception on how they want to um, classify leagues, uh, but you know, there's always going to be three or four, two, three, four really good teams in every league, and then you have, you know, then there's you know, a middle tier, and then there's a lower tier, and and that's that's in most leagues. I mean, we only have ten teams in our league too. That's what's different uh, than a lot. So, but again, it's uh, it's you know, it's that's for conversation, and for me, it's still just about us and and being able to match up. You know, when we have to step on the field from a defensive attitude, um, and you know, we we know I. I as defensive coaches, we know what good offenses are and, and you know, how they attack you and how they attack the field. Uh, so, you know, in matchups, it, it still gets down to matchups, you know, on the field. Thank you, Coach.